Hello and welcome to October 5 of the Bet Web. Today we are going to talk about um, another of my experiences with Ouija boards and animals and the supernatural. Um, I did mention Ouija boards in our first haunted house, October, briefly, but after that experience, I just decided that I didn't want to mess with them anymore. A lot of people are Ouija board fans. I think they like to dabble with the unknown and they don't realize all it can do, I guess. I'm not afraid of it. I just think that you should know what you're doing and tread carefully. And when you're playing with one of those, yes, it's plastic and paper and it's not anything um, that is anything in itself, but you're using your own psychic energy to channel through it and open gateways and you don't know what you're bringing out. It might be whoever you want to talk to, your great aunt or whatever, or your Uncle Sam that's going to tell you where the money was hidden when he died, and it might not be. So you don't know, and you could bring several things and you don't know. So it's a person psychic is what they're doing, and we all have psychic. We're all born with every ability. It's just some are more, I guess, toward the front of your mind than others. Like some people can sing really well, some people can't, but we all have a voice. So it's the same thing with like psychic. Some are more psychic than others. Some are more open, but you know, we all have it. And channeled the right way, it can do things that we did not want because again we don't know what we're using we don't know what we're playing with it's like you're throwing it out there and it's not directed so anyway with that boring lecture out of the way that is what I told a roommate of mine when I walked in from having dinner with friends and saw him with his little friends playing with a Ouija board in my house so I was just saying what I said to you and then I said put it away get it out now and they did and everybody scattered and life was good and I am holding two of our pets now as you can see we have Mandrake the rat and we have all our rats are usually named Mandrake because it's like one rat character that we write and all the rats just are great little Mandrakes usually not always we have a few others but this one came from the haunted bat his little tail moves I love him he's been a beloved pet um, the other ones are on all fours and he's like sitting up so I like that a lot and I love his claws and his fur he's just very charming and then I'm holding Scorcher our black cat he's not feeling overly social but he did, agreed to feature in the video because we're talking about animals and the supernatural and pets and so anyway that's why they're starring here and cuddling with me for this video but so this happens with the roommate and then everybody moves on and on with their evening everything's fine the next day the roommates at work the other roommates at work I'm in the house alone Ooh, cute scary music. Actually, oh, it's going on in the background already, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. But I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, I grew up in a haunted house, so I wasn't worried about it. And I didn't think anything was in the house from the Ouija board because I don't really see spirits or anything. So unless they're actually physically doing something, I usually don't get any kind of feeling. But I'm just having a day alone, enjoying my alone time and my peace. It's great. And I'm putting away clothes, laundry, just boring stuff. And, um, Part of my dresser decides to break the bureau and it's like a stick of wood that just came off the front of the drawer. And I've got clothes everywhere stacked up in my hands. I don't have time to deal with this piece of wood that just decided to come off my dresser. So I just threw it in the floor like, okay, get out of my way. As soon as these clothes are put away, I will get it and attend to it and throw it away. But right now I'm doing the clothes and I'm not going to digress. It's just a thing. It'll be there when I'm done. So that's what happened. And I continue to put the clothes away and I'm almost done putting the clothes away. And I hear the sound in the floor. And it's something hitting the carpet. Flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop at my feet. And now there are two animals in the room, but they're birds. There are two parakeets in two separate cages. There was our bird, Calcifer. And he was with me for 11 years. He's like a brother, very intuitively attached to me. But very calm and steady, and neither of us see spirits. So he wasn't doing anything. And then there's another bird, Ivan. It was my brother's bird, and he named this bird after Ivan the Terrible, which I don't know why, because it was the sweetest bird ever. He just wanted attention and love, and he was very friendly and cheerful and not mean at all. So Ivan's very outgoing and just please love me kind of bird, and he's in his cage. So neither of the birds are doing this sound that's at my feet going flip-flop on the floor. I look down, the stick is just flipping back and forth, like chum, 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 like just back and forth. And my mind, even though I grew up in a haunted house, likes to search for stuff. I'm like, dude, what if there's a mouse or a rat like Mandrake here? You know, somehow in the house and he's moving the stick from under. I don't know why, but I'm like, I don't see a rat. So I jump up on the bed 
and I'm looking down and the thing is just moving and I, I don't know why I jumped up on the bed I just felt really scared and again that was odd because I lived in a haunted house and you don't need to show these things fear they're like dogs don't do that but it had been a few years since I had moved out of my teenage home um, I was like two years and like a year and a half anyway okay I digress but it's like I had not lived in the haunted house for like a year and a half. I got used to peace of mind and no ghosts around. So I guess I didn't react the best way. And this was a new ghost. I didn't know this ghost. So just like suddenly I'm afraid. I jump back on the bed. And the stick just keeps flipping itself on the floor. And I'm not even looking down at this point. I am freaked out. I don't see that well. Um, so I have to be right up on it. So I wasn't trying to be right up on it. But I could hear it just fine. It's flipping back and forth several feet away on the floor. And I'm up on the bed. And then I just finally collected myself and said, okay, Morticia, this is ridiculous. You know what to do. It's just like a dog. It's just a damn ghost. Go and grab the stick, snatch it up. Then it can't flip it around anymore and go throw it away. Just say, this is it. No, you stop. Because I used to threaten our ghost at home all the time back in the day. So, okay. I get toward the edge of the bed like I'm going to get off the bed and Ivan just freaks out throwing himself against the bars and screaming and acting like he does when somebody he doesn't know is trying to catch him and hold him or something. Just freaking out, just totally going ballistic. So I, being an intelligent, deductive person, thought he wasn't doing that before I started getting off the bed. Let's go back onto the bed. So I was just on the edge of the bed, kind of crouching, about to get on the floor. You know, I go back onto the bed, toward the middle of this queen-size bed. He's fine. He stops. Everything's cool. Flip, flip, flip goes the stick. So, okay, he doesn't want me down there with whatever it is. He does not want me down there. I'm intelligent enough to see that. He reacts when I go toward the, you know, edge. He's happy when I back up. He's fine. Calcifer, of course, is just looking in his mirror, doing his thing. He does not care. He does not see ghosts. The point of this is that I discovered through this experience that not all animals can. People seem to think all oh, animals are so much more in tune than we are. And animals are just like people. Some see them, some don't. Ivan could even tell when an earthquake was coming. He would freak out right before that and let my brother know. He woke him up right before an earthquake. And Calcifer never woke me up for an earthquake, never moved during an earthquake, never gave a crap about the earthquake whatsoever. So, you know, just like people, some are a lot more in tune than others. And that's just the point of that that I wanted to share. But then we go on, you're going, okay, now that's great, but I wanna know what happened. So, okay, what happened was I tried again after a few minutes, cause I am brave and I, I know about ghosts. I've lived in the haunted houses. I know that I need to just go down there and grab the stick. And Ivan freaks out again. So I back up again, cause I'm going, well, he can see what this thing looks like probably. So if he doesn't want me down there, maybe I should just listen to the darn bird. So, okay. And this is like 10 minutes of happening where the stick is moving. It finally stops. Okay, the stick quit moving, no activity. Now I can get down off the bed and go throw the stick away. Like, that was interesting. Okay, well, it's over now. So I'm going toward the edge of the bed again. As you can probably guess, Ivan freaks out. So I back up onto the middle of the bed again. And I'm thinking, okay, well, the stick is stuck, but he still doesn't want me down there. So what's it doing? Like, lurking? I don't know. So I have a cordless phone. I grab the phone. I call my roommate. I'm like, ah! You know, very unlike me, but quite hysterical and angry. And you need to get your bleep bleep home. And this bleep bleep ghost that you bleep bleep last night is bleep bleep bleep. And the bird won't let me up the bleep bleep bed. And I have no idea why. It must be something really bad. Bleep bleep bleep. And he goes, well, I can't just leave work. And I go, bleep 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 bleep. You can't. You want a place to live when you get home, you better. <laughs> so, okay, I'll tell my boss something and get out of here. Okay, you do that now because I'm like whatever it is I just think he should be here because he's the one who did it and I didn't do it and I can't even get up the bed but you know about 15 minutes later I don't know the room just felt lighter less heavy less creepy more peaceful so I tried one more time just to get up the bed and Ivan was fine when I got toward the edge he did not react so I went ahead got off the bed threw the stick away and by the time the roommate got home in 30 minutes it was over and I was like well I'm sorry about that you know because I didn't know it was gonna be over after the stick had quit moving Ivan still wouldn't let me off the bed so I didn't know but you know it's your fault anyway you shouldn't have you know brought whatever into this house anyway so um, that was the end of that I didn't happen again I didn't do anything to make it go away I don't know how to spirit banish or anything like that I was even leery of talking about this because I'm like what if people don't believe me because I'm very skeptical 
And I don't always believe other people's stuff when I think it sounds kind of far-fetched or out there, um, to be honest. Like, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And I know, I guess I can be too skeptical, but then I get, like, I don't want to be too open-minded either and believe all kinds of crazy stuff. But some people will tell you and they really did experience it. And I guess all of you have heard the crackpots in the world that, you know, just like, okay. So, I don't know. I never know. And I guess it's okay to believe your own experiences because I'm sure some of you who are watching this don't even believe in ghosts and Gomez didn't either until he started seeing them so by all means you know you have to experience it to to understand it or believe it and that's fine just don't disbelieve others you know okay I get that you experienced this I didn't and that's fine you know whatever um but I just wanted to share that because it was Halloweeny and that's why we're dressed up in our ghoul costumes mm -hmm. because it's Halloweeny and we're having our little pet friends cuddled up with us ghoulishly having a enchanting evening at home and tomorrow we'll probably go out and troll the town and see what's going on. And then we're going to watch Nightmare Before Christmas and eat with our friends since we had our party last night. So, which is also up where we were at our friend's um, Halloween party while they were playing, performing. So that was cute. And they did a song for us, which was awesome. And so anyway, but yeah, that was the experience. And it was, it was scary just because it felt, I guess I didn't feel scared of our ghost at home she was just an annoying little poltergeist brat and this just felt it scared me I don't know um and I don't think she didn't move objects as long either I think that was part of it like she did not move like she would throw something but then that would be done or she would take something away like you would just find your thing gone and then she would return it like I saw my comb just fall out of the air okay that was just one motion it wasn't constant repetitive long term moving stuff around which I guess can maybe mess with your mind longer that one time okay it was done it was over it was two seconds but I guess this one was longer and now that I'm saying that I think that's what scared me it just kept going on too long I was like okay you need to stop now um but I don't know what it was and I don't know if it left or if it just didn't do that to me anymore since I can't see ghosts and eventually I moved out so I never had another experience I've been never freaked out again so I don't know if that does mean it left or if that just means that um you know it left me alone but you know I cannot say I don't want to theorize I don't want to claim to know but I just wanted to share that because I thought it was really interesting myself to discover that not all animals can apparently see things because everybody seemed to really believe that and that's what I kept hearing everywhere so um, some can, some can't, and they're, they're just like us. We're all souls and bodies, you know, and I don't feel that animals are less or greater than us. There are some smart people, there are some intuitive people, there are some smart animals, there are intuitive animals, and there are some that just don't see it. And Calcifer was very smart, he just didn't see ghosts, and, you know, um, that's cool. I don't have the talent either, so... I hope you guys enjoyed this spooky thing and when you play with the Ouija board I'm not gonna say don't or they're evil or they're whatever I'm just saying they're a tool that is using you know you're using your mind and if you don't know what you're doing then the board doesn't know what it's doing <laughs> you know and you don't know what you're gonna let in and I don't know what I'm doing so I'm not gonna do it um so I don't know Gomez you have anything to share on that concept well, it might be prudent if you do play with the Witcher board to... Don't do it. Don't do it is the first step. <laughs> We're quoting The Fairy Man by Krista Berg. I love that song. If you guys like spooky music, check it out. Sorry, I digress with music because I love music. But uh, it's good to take precautions uh, either way. Um, if you have to do it, even if you don't believe it, just take precautions just because they're not going to hurt you. And the precautions could be like mentally only uh, ask those spirits that say wish you a benefit to come in and the others to stay behind an imaginary boundary. There are all kinds of metaphysical exercises on drawing boundaries. And if you think, well, I'm calling my Aunt Pearl, she obviously wouldn't hurt me, so that's what I'm doing. No, but you're not saying and nobody else who would hurt me while I'm at it. Yeah. And that's what he's saying. You think, because, you know, okay, if I'm calling on somebody nice, I obviously want somebody nice. So you have to be very specific with any kind of magic, and this is magic, trust me. The mind is magic. The mind and the intent is magic. It's just the magic that isn't something you can touch. So I don't mean, like, wave your wand Harry Potter. I mean, you know, the mind is metaphysics. So when you are thinking, I want this to happen, I want to talk to Aunt Pearl, I just want to talk to Aunt Pearl. I don't want to talk to anybody bad. And if anybody good wants to come through that, you know, is nice too, that's okay, I guess, but nobody bad. Now, I'm not doing this at all, but he's saying, if you have to do it. Yes. 
And also there is like, uh, seems to be this rule where the nicer people uh, are the ones that are uh, less active on the physical plane somehow because supposedly uh, some theories believe that strong emotions are the ones that trigger that kind of an energy to move stuff and uh, telekinetic powers and whatever else. So you're saying like spirits that are angry or did not pass well or they just want to screw with people? Yeah. Are they the, more likely to be around whenever you're using this board to call you in the first place? Yeah, they would be the ones that would push your end pearl aside and say, screw you old bitch, I'm coming soon still. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it's dangerous. It's not because your intention is is not the purest of any kind or anything it's because it does not always work that way and you have to take in into account exactly how it works or else you might find yourself on the less pleasant side of that kind of a parlor game that many people think it to be and uh, if they don't take precautions they could occasionally find as we see in horror movies <laughs> that it's not just a game just like with all other tools of mediumship or that activate your psychic like a pendulum like uh, special talismans haunted objects haunted houses if they're honestly haunted or whatever else so always good to take precautions mental exercises they don't hurt anything even if you don't believe in them specifically yeah but if you don't think it just do it anyway it won't hurt it's not gonna cost you anything it might help you and you know my experience obviously wasn't anything like the Ouija board movie that's out now where outrageous over the top stuff happens but I'm not making anything up I'm telling you the truth so it's not going to be outrageous or over the top um but it still doesn't mean that energies can't be around that influence your state your mood your feelings you know and they can be subtle like that and you know when they're angry you can feel it just like when a person's around who's always toxic and negative and angry and it brings you down you know spirits that are sticking around that are like that after you opened your house up to them can do the same thing i would think right gomez yes that was well stated oh i learned from the best oh moshe got me so on this night before all hallows eve while you're thinking of something spooky to do we here at Batweb Gothic Reviews, Morticia and Gomez, recommend that you choose wisely. <laughs>